park on my Texas trip is Six Flags Fiesta Texas. I gave this park and it made me think in years of Why do you call it your nemesis? Well, in 2019, my experience was pretty bad. In fact, I would say it's about as bad as you could get. There are multiple issues I had with this park. The crowds were large, one train ops on multiple roller coasters, the operations were some of the worst I've ever seen, they had a free spin, which is my least favorite of the free spins of the time, and Wonder Woman Gold Last Coaster, despite running three trains, had no more than half the seats available. So, it was running at not even two train capacity. That line was through all the switchbacks and out of the entrance. Pretty bad, right? But none of those compared to what the absolute worst part about this whole experience was. And that is the fact that Iron Rattler was closed. This is my second ever time being at this park and I've never ridden Iron Rattler. So, as you can expect, I'm going straight there right now to get on it because I am here for Roller Coaster Rodeo, as you guys saw in the title. And I do not want to miss Iron Rattler for a second time. Unfortunately, Wonder Woman Gold Lasso Coaster is going to be closed due to its renovation. So this sadly means I'll be over two on having both RMCs open, which is just unfortunate. Like, I hear that's pretty much impossible to do for the most part. Might as well go over and get on Iron Rattler, see how that ride is, because currently my favorite coaster in the entire state of Texas is Mr. Freeze. Everyone says Iron Rattler is the best coaster in all of Texas, so I'm expecting it to be a top tier RMC like a lot of people say it is. So, I have really high hopes for it, so let's see how it runs. You've got to be kidding me. It's closed right now. Number one steel roller coaster for 2013. I can maybe see that being the case, but I don't know. For a second, I thought it said best coaster for 2013, but you have Outlaw Run that is also my top 10, and I would much rather ride that over Iron Rattler, I had to imagine. But I don't know. A lot of people hype up IRAD to be better than Outlaw Run. I just realized why IRAD isn't open. The park closed at six, and I had no idea about it. We are in position for the welcome ceremony, I guess you could say, by park president Jeffrey Sieber. This is our biggest and best roller coaster rodeo ever. First, I think we need to go through because this is a three-day event. There is lots to cover. So first things first, Jeff, what happens when our guests get through the gates? You should have already received, as you came through the gates, a few very important items. You have your poster voucher, a few drink tickets, and you'll meet your meal voucher for Sunday. You'll check up on the board. The yellow tickets are for ERT tonight. The white tickets are for ERT tomorrow. Those are good for two alcoholic beverages during the Not a good one. We have to be over 21. We are going If you are under 21, you should get them to the adult that brought you. That's right. The gift that keeps on giving. The gift that keeps on giving. Now, we do have a few frequently asked questions that we want to talk about. First and foremost, Welcome to Texas if you've never been. It's hot. It's going to be hot all weekend long, so stay hydrated. We have set up all around the park uh, places for you to get water. Lots of places for you to hydrate and stay hydrated. So please, number one, stay hydrated, all right? Next, we do have a few filming guidelines. You are going to see some amazing behind the scenes sights over the next three days. Whether you're going to do the lift lines, how many people did a lift line this morning? Awesome, we have two more days of lift climbs, one of the best views of Six Flags Fiesta Texas. We have behind the scenes tours tomorrow. You have one-on-one -on -one time with the president himself, Mr. Jeffrey Siebert, and we welcome you to take pictures and video of all of those experiences. The one thing that we kindly ask you not to do is film on any ride or attraction during any, any ERT or any park operation. Other than that, you've got both loads of content ahead of you, great experiences, take advantage of anything. If you have any questions about that, or want to work with us in the future, Jorge and I are here all weekend. Stop us, talk to us, make the connection. We're happy to take care of you anytime you visit the park. Yeah. Going down, Jeff! We are Let's see what we got. So after this, we have a super secret surprise coming for you. Do they know their surprises? I don't know if they know all the, Ooh, the surprises. They feel let's towards Superman. Up. Let's give it a surprise. Pretty okay, cool. all right. For those that don't know, the very first thing that's going to happen after this event is we're going to have a really cool exclusive walking tour of the Superman infield area of Superman Krypton Coaster. Now, for those that uh, got to experience it last year, you are up close and personal in some areas that nobody is allowed into. As you can see there, we have some smiling faces from last year. It is going to be a great experience. That is going to be directly after this from 8.15 to 8.45. Dangerous. As this tour ends, once we're done taking pictures, you're done getting all that great content, we're going to stay in the infield because 
We are going to walk to our next activity through the train tunnel. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. What? Through the train tunnel? Oh, that is a curveball. I was not expecting right there. That's not even the surprise I was talking about. Oh, that's not the surprise. So what's the surprise you're That is just about? another surprise. But that's the great thing. This weekend is full of surprises that you don't even know about. Okay. It's going to be awesome. Once we get through the train tunnel, we're going to have to crack Axel Canyon for Friday, Friday Night Rights. Night Rights. Yes. Now, Friday Night Frights is one of our favorites here for Roller Coaster Radio. As you can see, it's going to be the end of the night, 9 to 11 p.m., the streets of Crack Axle Canyon. We're going to have exclusive ride time on Daredevil Dive, flying, uh, Daredevil Dive Flying Machines, Roadrunner Express, Iron Rattler, Dr. Pat Holmes Cliffhanger, Yosemite Sam's Wacky Wagons, and Foghorn Leghorn's Barnyard Railway. But there's also other things going on in Crack Axle, right, Jeff? There are. There's some big things going on at Crack Axle, including two of our signature haunted houses. Is that right? That's right. That's oh, right. right. I, I, not, I, think, so I think you're right, but there's right. something else to that, right? Hmm. Is there something going on one of those haunted houses? I don't know. Might it be she? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what we're trying to get at is that Friday Night Frights is special this year because you lot are going to be able to be the last people ever to experience one of our haunts. Oh. Why? What's going to happen? Now, I didn't tell Park President Jeffrey Siebert that I put this next slide in here, but uh, we might have some uh, I might some have a job behind the scenes looks at what's to come. Are y'all ready? Ready? You guys ready? All right. Well, Friday Night Frights is going to be a lot of fun because... Well, we can't tell you. You gotta wait till Fright Fest. <laughs> That's right. We're gonna have the biggest Fright Fest ever here in San Antonio, wow, starting select night on September, September 7th, all the way through November 3rd this year. So you're just gonna have to stick around to find out some exciting news on that. Sure. So the fun all begins at 8:30 a.m. with two morning. activities. We have our cowboy breakfast first thing, which there's no better way to start the day than fueling up on all our favorites. Yeah, that's whatever. And we also have the cliff or the uh, lift tours going on again. So if you sign up for one of those, please, 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 please make sure you so are here by 8:30 sharp, so we can get a little food in you, you, get you hydrated, and then get you exercising up that lift. Tour. Right after that, we're going to head over to Pirates of the Deep Sea for a lights on walkthrough experience nice. beginning at 9 a.m. And that'll transition right to our morning ERT in DC Universe, where our guests will enjoy the return of one of our newest and most popular coasters. You may have noticed today. What? What's that, Jeff? I don't know. Kid Flash Cosmic Coaster! Hey! Kid Flash Cosmic Coaster. Yeah, gotta love it. I was kind of hoping for Wonder Woman going last year. What, no. what is it that you're saying? Getting those coaster counts, right? Coaster credits. Coaster credits. Coaster credits. I call the coaster counts in Germany. Jorge or, uh, is a budding coaster enthusiast, so the more you can teach him about all things coaster enthusiast related, the better off they'll be. So please, thank you. take time to educate him this morning. <laughs> we got lots of stuff happening on Saturday, but ultimately it leads to one of our favorite events, an all-park ERT. Yeah. Yeah. Every single attraction available will be available to you to oh, tomorrow cool. night. Right. Look around. Look at your friends and family here. They're joining you. This group for an all-park ERT. How incredible is that? Yeah. 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 But in addition to that, we're also going to have snacks, refreshments. Don't forget to use your drink tickets tomorrow, too. There's no excuse for you to leave tomorrow without having a Plenty of food, fun, and thrills on all the rides here at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. One important note, the smaller rides, the kids' rides, will begin to close at approximately 11 p.m. tomorrow. So if you need that coaster credit, if you need anything on a kids' ride, try to hit that early on, but you can ride clear up until midnight. Now, I did forget to mention on Saturday, we are bringing back one of our favorite shows in the quarter wall. At the end of the night, to end the night before the ERT, we have Oh What a Night, this time the 180 edition. Now, what that means is that from Iron Rattler to Wonder Woman, we're shooting off individual fireworks across the sky of Fiesta, Texas. So it is going to be a spectacular way to end the night. Yeah, All right, next up, Sunday. We got Go some ahead, fun for you in store. It's going to start early again with another fun tour that we're bringing back.
Sunday we're going to start again with lift walks, but also we are going to do the Poltergeist Spaghetti Bowl Tour. Which, if you have never seen, that is by far one of the most unique coaster experiences we have to be underneath and around those tracks. The one guy, yeah. yes! Clowning on Poltergeist guys sounds like a Now on Sunday we do have a wave pool party for you, so you'll get to have fun on the wave pool, party, wave pool side, on the Lone Star Lagoon side of the water park. Uh, before it opens. So that'll be all for you. We'll have a DJ out there and some food. It'll be a fantastic time. All right, let's go ahead and just get through some of the perks, Jeff. Now on your lanyard, you do see some of these perks, but of course we want to just let you know that uh, you do get some fantastic perks while being here for Roller Coaster Rodeo. So two of the biggest perks, which is unheard of with any enthusiast events, you get VIP ride access with that lanyard which means you get the same access the Flash Pass folks get, but you don't have to wait. Yeah! You that line and you ride as many times as you want. Exploit. Oh. Kind of like a BLJ Mario yeah. Speed Yeah. Speedrun track, get on quickly, let's push it go. Also, when you need that little break of air conditioning in your day, you get exclusive access to the Coca-Cola VIP lounge. You get access... <laughs> you get access to Saturday and yeah, Sunday, man. but exclusively tomorrow, from noon to six, you'll see when you go up there, we have some volunteers that will be looking for your lander to show you where the bathroom is, where you're gonna have complimentary food and drink available, as well as some of the coolest patios up there to sit and relax and enjoy a little yes. break your day. Now, coaster rodeo Largest ever. Ride. And it's only getting bigger by what I hear. Oh, the numbers are growing. Uh, as we speak, but it is the largest roller coaster rodeo. We have 36 different states represented, two different wow. countries, people coming in from Australia and Canada. Holy cow. So we're going to the next That's awesome. Glad this is going to be a lot of fun, and we want to thank you, each and every one of you, for uh, coming each year and spreading the joy and talking to all sorts of people Australia coming person. into San Antonio, Texas. I think I'm that so mid. Of thrills. Channel down below, by the way. Now, our posters that Jeff did touch on are a three-piece set. You saw when you come on in, you get these little coupons that will, or the vouchers that will actually get your roller coaster rodeo poster. So all three days will get you all three. Individual days will get you those individual three days. Uh, we do want to give a shout out to our in park designers for putting together such a special, exclusive, and a nice take-home memory for the event. Hey, see you This event's been going on but on behalf of myself, those that I have not met, I am Jeffrey Seward, Park President for Six Flags Fiesta Texas. But more importantly, I'm the caretaker of this fine facility, as you can imagine. My real job is to make sure that I'm teaching the next generation to pay it forward and make Six Flags Fiesta Texas a magical place and make it better than ever before. Well, I cannot emphasize well, enough well. the friendships, Iron the excitement well, that we have, great. and the passion that <laughs> you better be good better, bro. It makes it Guy looks so fresh! Fresh! Right now. Bro, this is not Cosmic Rewind. They're playing Everybody Wants to Rule the World. Headed off to the Superman Krypton Coaster infield now. And unfortunately, the ride will not be running, obviously, because the park closed at 6 and it's past 8 o'clock now. But it'll still be cool to get some awesome shots of Superman from the infield. So let's head inside. Here's Joker Carnival of Chaos. And I imagine this one, it'll look like it's six flags and those when it's fully built. And because it's opening at my home park in a couple months, I don't feel the need to ride it here. I'll just wait until I can actually ride it anytime I want at my home park. Literally walking on the train tracks into the Superman Krypton Coaster infield. Like, this is sick. Loving these views already. Bro, they're actually running Superman down here. I did not expect them to do this. Oh, they're running train. Oh, trippy. I didn't see that. Oh, so it's going to roll right through here? Yeah. Yeah, last year I had my hand right up on the Yeah, it's going to roll right through
Where is it? I There's no one. Yeah, I was like, there's no one. Walking through the train tunnel right now, and boy, that was an awesome backstage tour. I did not expect them to run Superman empty, but I'm glad they did because getting shots of the train running was awesome. Now it's over to Crack Axle Canyon, where it'll be time for the first ERT session. This one, of course, being on Iron Rattler, Dr. Diabolical's Cliffhanger, and Roadrunner Express. Both Irat and Dr. Diabolical are new to me, so obviously I'm gonna start with Irat and then do Diabolical, and then maybe do Roadrunner, but Irat is definitely top priority. First ever ride on Iron Rattler, front row. I'm expecting a top tour arm. Let's see how this is. Just rode Iron Rattler for my first time, and I did not ride the back row, and I was in the front row, and I was the one with like five people on the train. As of now, that's probably a bottom tier RMC for me. I don't know, I just wasn't really feeling it. But then again, I was like front row fairly at the train, so I'm gonna try the back row right now and see how that is. I think the inversion was my favorite part of Iron but other than that, I wasn't too impressed. And I actually thought New Texas Giant was better, so let's go try the back. Next in line for the back row. This could either be really insane or really disappointing. Which will it actually be? I'll find out in just a few minutes. Team, you can look up, you can look down, but it's into the tent, turn it around, and enjoy your right here at the Iron Rattler. Goodbye. Welcome back to Dave Wranglers. Hope you all enjoyed the ride on the Iron Rattler. Now, we'll be back to the show. We'll be back to the show. We'll be back to the show. Don't forget any loose gear and whatnot. Have a great day, Six Flags. After riding the back row on Iron Rattler for the 
full train, I can confidently say this is one of my least favorite RMCs. The drop is definitely not the best in the world. Like, I would take the drop on Iron Quasi, Outlaw Run, and Steel Vengeance over this one for sure. And the drop on the quarry wasn't as strong as people said it was. I mean, it was still better than like the airtime I got on Shockwave, but I don't know. It's not the best airtime in the world, like people said it is. So, it's a bottom tier RMC for me. I definitely like the front row over the back row on Iron Rattler. The sense of speed up front is insane, and the airtime is much more powerful up there. I don't know if it's better than New Texas Giant or not. For me, it's the length. The length really holds the Spencer back from being elite. It's still a good ride, but definitely overrated. Dr. Diabolical's cliffhanger. I gotta say, I was impressed. I think this is my favorite dive coaster. It was about as smooth as Mako and SeaWorld Orlando, which I was very pleasantly surprised about. The front especially, that is true, but in the back it was maybe a slight bit rougher, but it was by no means unbearable. Low-key was more impressed with that than Iron Rattler, to be honest. Now I'm gonna go back to Iron Rattler and try it a couple more times to see if it's running better. This match you train to make me spoon and enjoy your run here at the Iron Rattler. Goodbye. Like crazy lateral injector pop, and it was nuts. That might be my favorite part of the ride, though. Exit out of the tunnel, like it's just so powerful that one moment. And then the zero zero on top of the coil wall is also good. It's starting to grow on me a little bit. Very bright and early start to day two here at Roller Coaster Rodeo. And I forgot to mention what my ride count from yesterday was. I got six rides on Iron Rattler and two on Dr. Diabolical's Cliffhanger. As for what we're about to do now, I know I think there's some behind the scenes tours that are going to be starting soon. Not sure if any of them interest me, with the exception of like the on top of the quarry wall, like with IRAT and whatnot. But I'll just play it by ear and see what we got going on here. I know what I could do. Kid Flash is on the DC ERT. That could be starting soon, and I've never ridden Kid Flash before, so I think I should just head over there and wait for that to open. I'm about 20 minutes early, but there's no one else here. And you got some people up there doing a lift walk at Superman Krypton Coaster. The lift walks here at Roller Coaster Rodeo are on Superman and then Dr. Diabolical, which got some more people right up there over here where the drop is. So, as much as I would like to get up there, it's not going to be happening this trip. Maybe next time I'll get up there. absolutely destroyed us so I need to go ride the red side right now and see how that is dog I said she's good I 
found out that you can still do the behind the scenes tour of Pirates of the Deep Sea. So I got a little bit of time left before the on the quarry wall backstage tour commences. So I'm um, taking a look at Pirates from backstage here. And it's so weird seeing this ride lit up. Like I've seen like Flight of Fear and stuff with the lights on in Justice League quite a bit. This is a new one for me. Oh man, those are the old fright lights from the old Scooby-Doo ride that this attraction replaced. Gave me a bit of a throwback to what Six Flags St. Louis used to have before Justice League Battle from Metropolis came in 2015. Now it's time for my most anticipated part of this entire event by far. The backstage tour on top of the quarry wall. This is gonna be awesome to get some insane views of these rides. Like, look at this. Roadrunner Express is literally all around me, which is insane. I'm especially excited to get some cool shots of Iron Rattler from the top of the quarry wall. And then eventually, whenever we're done up here, we're able to go to the bottom of the first drop on Iron Rattler. So I'm gonna go over there out to Wild, but first let's go on top of the quarry. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
it was all right. It would have been better if there wasn't that long period of time where they didn't send a single train. I think someone told me that it was like the first time doing it in the morning, which I personally think is not a good idea because there was a period of time, like, you know, like 10 minutes where the train didn't get sent. So yeah, it wasn't very cool. I would say I like the walk back tour of Superman and Krypton Coaster from yesterday a little better than this one. Speaking of Superman, I'm going to go ride that now because I haven't done that yet. And I really want to see how this full coaster holds up. definitely a lot rougher than I remember it being back in 2019. Now I'm gonna try the back row to see if that's any smoother. It's still good, but definitely not as smooth as I remember it being. Usually B&M flawless is from what I've heard are smoother in the back, not Superman. The back was so much rougher than the front and the rattle in the corkscrews was just insane. This thing is taking a hit in my ranking and I think I like cracking it sealed Orlando more than this. <laughs> it is testing so it's kind of bittersweet honestly as cool it is to see this ride testing to know that i'm over two with or you'll be the best ride in the park being closed i do still prefer wonder woman over iron rattler <laughs> just how good Poltergeist is. Since I last rode this, I've done both Flight of Fear clones. I've only done King's Dominion once, but I've ridden the one King's Island, I think nine times. Got a good feel for Flight of Fear, but I forgot what that second half was like with no mid course. And I loved it. I might as well go a second time because I was so impressed. Bye -bye. <laughs>
I think it's that. Yeah, no, I show what's going on. I don't know if I can do that. So good. I'm going back in December. I can't. Oh, wait. sweet. I'm trying to get the
playing the music from Justice League Battle for Metropolis from that speaker right near Batman. I know they've always played the music that plays inside the Hall of Justice, but I didn't know they had the music from like other parts of the ride, like for example, in the Room of the Joker animatronic as its own little soundtrack, as well as the Room with LexCorp. Those soundtracks were playing on that speaker right there, which I find to be pretty cool.
last time I rode anything was before that maintenance behind the scenes tour. I haven't ridden a coaster in quite a few hours, so I'm gonna change that by getting a ride on Roadrunner Express. <laughs>
your seatbelt, head on out to it. Don't forget any of those scary boy boys. Just went up against another enthusiast over at Pirates of the Deep Sea, and I won despite losing in the first half of the ride. So I feel like I clutched that one out. Although both of us got the highest rank, which is awesome. <laughs> park ERT with a poltergeist zen ride and let me tell you that second half at night is completely unhinged the last few turns before the corkscrew those are the real stars of the show in my opinion it was going way too fast with those and then the corkscrew just threw me off guard it was nuts i need to get on the remaining coast i haven't done yet so i'll be needing to do goliath and boomerang at the very least i do want to get a superman night ride because i haven't done a superman night ride before also pandemonium i forgot i haven't done pandemonium yet so i guess let's head over towards i guess goliath since we're heading this general direction let's actually do boomerang coast to coaster first i'm passing by the entrance route right now Goliath was over that was somewhere. Plus, I was gonna ride the but I never did. So, let's do this before Goliath. This much makes it back for Max and enjoy your ride. Doing a become a boomerang twice in a row is something I've never done, and it's honestly something I do not recommend doing. The only reason I rode boomerang coast to coaster twice in a row is because the second time I was the only one on it, whereas the first one I was one of only two people on the train. So I figured I'd get the Zen ride on this one, which I did. So that makes two Zen rides now. I'm wondering what coast I'll be able to get a Zen ride on now that I think about it. Iron Rattler, I don't see happening. Superman, I think it's possible, but I don't see it for sure happening. Pandemonium, I can see that one working just fine. Goliath, I maybe can get it, although I don't know. Roadrunner, possible. Kid Flash, no way. Dead Bob, 
Michael? Probably not. Batman, that's definitely not happening because I ain't riding that sucker. So let's go towards Goliath and see if we can get us that right on that one. I am knocking these Zen rides out one by one. First with Poltergeist, then Boomerang Coaster Coaster, and now Goliath. So how about we get another easy one out of the way? Pandemonium. Let's head over there. Bro, there's no way people are actually heading towards Pandemonium right now. To be fair, it is a low capacity ride, so I didn't know there's no line of smart, but I'm surprised people are actually heading to this one. I knew Pandemonium was gonna be free. There is like pretty much no way I could have missed that. If anything, I just waited an extra car or two because they had multiple cars running with no people on it, so that was easy. Now that I've gotten all the easy ones, I feel like out of the way, I think my next easiest chances are Superman, Roadrunner, or Dr. Diabolical. Because Kid Flash, that's not happening. I read that's not happening, but I'm not sure about those other three. Like I just mentioned, like Superman Diabolical or a roadrunner. So let's see if we can get us number on each of those. Ninja Turtles. Ninja Turtles. Ninja Turtles. thing is then ride is happening on Superman tonight. Between some people showing up at the last second multiple times, along with the ride running rough, I just don't see it happening. Plus, I'm not willing to put forth the effort to maybe get a Zen ride and give myself a headache by the BNM rattle in the process. So I'm moving on to something much smoother, and that'll be Dr. Diabolical's cliffhanger. So let's head over there. Uh, well, 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 I'll eat my words. I just got a Zen ride on the red side of Kid Flash. I did not see that one coming. And it was actually three laps instead of two. I was talking trash on the two people on the yellow side. It was so funny. And on the third level, I'm like, I'm a BLJ out of here. So I'm like, yeah, hey, like Mario does in Mario 64. So that was funny. Now let's actually go back to the original game plan and go for one on Dr. Diabolical. Maybe also try Roadrunner. One of the ride ops said I could come through the exit of Dr. Diabolical without having to deal with the free show. So, oh my. So there are some people here, it looks like. Dr. Diabolical didn't work, but I got a Zen ride on Roadrunner Express. So that is not Number six. Now what'll be number seven? I don't know. If I get to uh, get one on Iron Rattler, that would be absolutely insane, but I do not see it happening. But it's worth a try, so let's go for it. Iron Rattler didn't work, so it's time to attend Dr. Diabolical again. If this doesn't work, I might go back to Superman and try and get his head right on that. I don't think Dr. Diabolical is gonna be happening, honestly. I've gotten close, but it's not happening. Wait, is that a raccoon? What is that? I gotta keep my distance. I don't know if it's a skunk or whatnot. Oh, is it what I think it is? Oh my god, <laughs> no way. Oh my gosh, no. <laughs> oh my gosh, a raccoon going out of the trash can. Ah! Oh god. Oh my gosh, no way. Where's it going? I just can't believe I caught that on video. The raccoon went into the trash can, got like a turkey leg or something out of it, and just ran off with it. That was weird. Didn't think I'd see that. It took black to be a but there we go. When I make that video of the coasters that surprised and disappointed me this year, expect Superman Krypton Coaster to be high on the disappointment list. The rattle is just brutal. As much as I love Superman as a superhero, this flawless coaster is just not it. I would rather ride Superman Ultimate Flight at Six Flags Over Georgia or really any of the Superman flyers over this because this thing is just brutal today. Superman's rattle knocked me out for the rest of the night, so I can't really ride any more coasters without getting a huge headache. Not even diabolical, to be honest. So I'm just going to do Pirates of the Deep Sea a few times and then call it a night. Got a few more rides on Pirates of the Deep Sea to end on my day. And my final ride count from today was seven on Kid Flash, five on Pirates of the Deep Sea, four on Superman, three on Iron Rattler on Poltergeist, two on Boomerang, Dr. Diabolical, and Roadrunner, and then one on Goliath and Pandemonium. Today was a really solid day, although I was focusing on getting shots a lot today. And I did get a decent amount of rides in besides that. And I'll be here for a couple hours tomorrow, and unfortunately, I will not be able to do the Poltergeist walk back because it's just not feasible because it's midnight right now, and you have to be here like like 8 early morning. It's by the time I get back to my hotel, it'll be about 1 30. So, but I'll still be here for a couple hours tomorrow. So, let's jump to there. Started my last day at Fiesta Texas with first train of the day front row on Iron Rattler. It was running slow, as I kind of expected, and it's still one of the worst RMCs I've been on, but still a good ride. But definitely not the best I've seen this thing run.
sure it's a good spot to get some shots of Irat. So let's head down that way right now.
slash video mode basically all day. So I'm gonna be going over to Goliath now to get a couple rides in on that before heading out. <laughs>
rode front row and back row on Goliath to finish out my day here at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. I think my front row ride was better because I had possibly the longest ground I've ever had in my life. From the bottom of the first drop all the way to the end of the helix, I was not seeing anything. I was completely grayed out. Probably because I'm dehydrated, which I'm gonna go get some water now because I really need it. Plus it's really hot out. Final ride count from today was very simple. Two on Goliath, one on Iron Rattler. I got several rides in yesterday, so I didn't feel like I needed to ride that much today. Although it would have been nice to get on Gold Lassica during this trip, but we all know what happened there. It wasn't open. My total ride count from my entire time here at Roller Coaster Rodeo was 10 on Iron Rattler, 7 on Kid Flash Cosmic Coaster, 5 on Pirates of the Deep Sea, 4 on Dr. Diabolical's Cliffhanger and Superman Krypton Coaster, 3 on Goliath and Poltergeist, 2 on Boomerang Coaster Coaster and Roadrunner Express, and 1 on Pandemonium. In terms of highlights, all the backstage tours that I got to take part in were pretty cool. I especially love the Superman one. That was probably my favorite one just because the coaster was running all over us, and it was the cool one like in terms of temperature full park ERT last night the Zen right gauntlet I was doing that was pretty good and also seeing that raccoon go into the trash can was hilarious because I did not expect to see that and I sure did there are definitely some downsides to this event though I mean Iron Rattler not being quite as good as I was hoping for it to be I mean it was still an awesome ride but it's by no means world-class like a lot of people sell it to be golden last coaster being down the entire event was the biggest buzzkill because I'm now over two being at this park with both RMCs open because my first time in 2019 Iron Rattler was closed, and now this time Wonder Woman was closed. So maybe next time I'm here, I'll be able to get on both RMCs at the same time, but it just wasn't meant to be this time. Other than that, I enjoyed my first time here at Roller Coaster Rodeo. Before you click off this video, please be sure to leave a like if you haven't done so already. Be sure to comment what you enjoyed about this video, and be sure to share it with someone else you may know. If you're new to this channel, like we saw, please consider subscribing for more content like this. My goal is to hit 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year, so I'd appreciate you subscribing and turn the bell on so you get notified every time I upload a new video. I also have an Instagram account for the pictures I take whenever I visit parks, so be sure to check me out there as well. It'll be the link in the description. As as for my next vlog, it will be from SeaWorld San Antonio, where I hope to hit my 300th coaster on Texas Stingray. So stay tuned for that. And until then, I'll see you later.